It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We're on the ground in Palo Alto, California, the heart of Silicon Valley at SAP Silicon Valley headquarters. We're here for a very special event, an evening event. It's the Makers Women Who Make America, Women in Business. Uh, kind of a showing. It's a documentary put on by a PBS, by Makers. It's running on KQED, so we sat, we watched the movie, then we had a great panel discussion afterwards, and I'm really excited to have the moderator of the panel, Rachel Myro from KQED. Welcome. Thank you for thank you for allowing me to be here. Oh, our pleasure. So great job on the panel. Thank you. It got, it got a little squirrely uh, towards the end in some of the Q and A, but everything everything stayed pretty pretty civil most of the way through. I think so. It's good to have a robust discussion. If you don't have argument, you don't have a robust discussion. Yeah, that's good. So you're Silicon Valley reporter. So why does KQED have a Silicon Valley reporter? What does that sh say about the station? What are you finding? What's kind of your mission? We woke up and realized that a third of our audience, especially on the radio side, uh, is uh, coming from Santa Clara County. These are people trapped in traffic. They're a captive <laughs> audience for us, you know, on the 101, on the 280, and uh, very dedicated listeners. Uh, and we wanted to be there for them. And it's not that we haven't covered things uh, in the past. We have a fabulous science team. Uh, we've had a reporter based on the peninsula uh, in the past, and he continues to be on our team. We just wanted to expand our coverage to deal not just with technology, because there's an army of reporters from around the world doing that, but uh, to cover the region politically, economically, culturally, as well as covering the technology. So let's jump into this tonight's topic, which is really uh, women and will, women making a difference. And there seemed to be kind of two tracks of the women that were in the in the program. One was was the women who just knuckled down and just out toughed everybody in a big company and just did it. Um, or left to start their own advertising firm, uh, finance firm, or the other ones who, who did startups. Um, we've got both here in the Valley. What do you see and, and what are some of the characteristics that you think drive uh, someone to go one way or the other? I think it's what your experience is. If like some of our panelists, you were lucky enough to have a mentor, you were lucky enough to have higher ups recognize and promote you, then you're operating within the uh, the company that is providing that that ready stage for achievement. If you can't get there, then you need to go outside. You need to get out. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, one of the Rachel Gonzalez, I was reading on the background. She has been at the bank for like 30 years. She worked herself up from a teller, and now she's at B of A, and she's the president of the Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, business, so you can really do it if you're in the right situation and you execute on those opportunities. I wish I could say the same for myself. I, I have moved twice from companies where I felt I had hit my glass ceiling. And um, I, I think every woman's situation is different. She needs to assess whether she has mentors, whether she can cultivate mentors, whether she needs to break through on her own. Uh, one of the topics that came up, uh, your observation actually from the movie was was the number of women that were profiled who went to all women's colleges. And it brought up the subject of kind of single sex education. I was wondering kind of what are your observations on single sex education? What did you think of as you were watching the, the documentary? I was struck by the fact that there were so many leaders uh, in business who had come up through the women's colleges. I, it strikes me that that's a rarity today. Uh, I certainly didn't see it in my own experience coming up through public schools. But I'm curious, there are so many studies that seem to suggest that girls lose their confidence about their skills and capacities somewhere around adolescence. And, and it seems to me there could be an argument for single sex education, at least for part of your educational career. Yeah, for sure. Well, I have two daughters who went to single sex middle school. and. Uh, the most often stated fact is, is, is it's more about the little boy who just raises his hand but before he knows the answer and, and the girl and the girl yeah. doesn't raise her hand until she's thought it through thereby she never gets a chance to raise her hand so it's interesting and that, that comes to that question of cognitive bias that I think a lot of people in Silicon Valley are struggling with in what ways am I perpetuating stereotypes perpetuating um, bias uh, towards men, towards women, towards everyone I come in contact with. I, I think we all have to 
take a hard look at ourselves because the statistics suggest that our industry has a lot to uh, improve. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as, as you said before we went on camera, uh, you know, the, the overt the overt racism, the overt sexism, you know, is nothing like it used to be. But but the, just simply looking at the data, looking at the numbers, bears the fruit that you know there's not a match in the numbers. Um, the number of women in uh, running for Fortune 500 companies is basically the same percentage as it's been for a while. We clearly have some work to do. Sheryl Sandberg hit a nerve with Lean In, and I think that's something that whether you agree with her, whether you disagree with her, whether you want to think about it some more, clearly there's a situation we need to address. We don't need to go at it like the women we saw in the documentary, Hammer and Tong, <laughs> you right. know, demanding rights, suing for rights, right. starting companies right. to, to uh, achieve the leadership potential they were capable of achieving. But we have to do something different than what we're doing right. now. But at the same time, we all have, we all look through a filter, right? There's no such thing as an unbiased view of anything. And, and even tonight, you know, the, the, the main topic was about um, women, but then it got into race, it got into some other things. So, you know, clearly we all bring a set of, of experiences, a point of view, um, kind of a view of things that is, is it almost more of a management of your filter as opposed to pretending that we can work without a filter. I also came away with the with the strong feeling that it's up to all of us, men, women, young, old, uh, to be advocates for each other, to be mentors for each other. If you hear someone being bad-mouthed in an unfair way when they're not in the room, it's up to you to step forward. If you see someone who needs some good advice and you're in a position to give it, give it. Yeah. Great. Well, Rachel, thanks again for uh, for being here. Thanks for, for hosting the panel. It's a terrific job. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. So I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground in Palo Alto at SAP at the Women Making a Difference in America, Women in Business show. Thanks.